Elena, how did you first become aware of the online trolling that you were experiencing? And what impact did it have on you both personally and professionally? And what more do you think could be done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your question. It's such an important one and something that I've now been kind of fi uh, fighting publicly for the last two or three years. And uh, it's, um, it's not an easy topic to talk about because I think ultimately what we're trying to do is just go out there, go about our day, uh, you know, do our job. We are, you know, in the public eye and being public figures. Uh, but that shouldn't stop us from, you know, having an Instagram account and having it open. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm not out here hurting anyone. I'm just actually, in fact, the opposite. I'm trying to do something good with my platform and create a safe space and a community as well and then um, you know you do get a bit of this hate and you get trolling and I've had it from everything from you know mental health perspective to body shaming uh, you know to abuse as well and I, I consider myself to be pretty strong I think mm. and, and I've got pretty thick skin but to actually read some of those things to you know um, when it comes to you know are you going to try and kill yourself again with a laughing emoji which is what happened this year mm. and I'm not the only one that gets put through this. So yeah, it's been something that I'm actually so passionate about. And I've had people close to me that actually really care about me go, you know, don't read that stuff. Or, you know, some people mm. have said, oh, well, you know, you put yourself out there on the social media, that's to be expected. It's not actually. Why is it normal to be abused? Right. If we had it in real life, people wouldn't be able to get away yeah. with it. If I was on a tennis court on, on centre court in the middle of the Australian mm. Open and someone was you know, screaming out and insulting me, they would get taken mm. away right, by security and there would be consequences. So I think the question is why are there no consequences when it actually comes to social well, media? And just one more thing. They, they have no idea actually how much damage they are doing. I've, during this summer, I've actually called it evil and I really stand behind that. And um, yeah. and, and why I say that is because actually people's lives are at stake. You have no idea how many people I had just walking through the grounds of the Australian Open, going to you know my next match uh, to commentate and do my work, come to me and say, or even write to me actually on social media and say. You know, thank you so much for actually tackling this because, um, you know, my brother took his life 24 hours ago and we were at his funeral. Mm. And then you read these comments and it was breaking my heart um, to actually hear this. But I, I actually know that that's how it works because there's so many people suffering. Nine, nine Australians, just in Australia alone, every single day, take their life. That's almost three and a half thousand people a year and almost a million people worldwide and then someone is out there actually joking about it you don't know what kind of a damage it can do to me or to someone else they might take their life because of that there needs to be more accountability responsibility maybe you know it's not going to help to uh, have a verified account where you have to give your details your driver's license and actually prove who you are to actually open an account but i, I certainly think it's something mm. to try because the accounts that i've gotten abuse from 90 mm. percent of them were private accounts um, no picture like mm. you said no followers anonymous but also as soon as i called them out this year and mm. i didn't even put their accounts up i was I thought I'd be, you know, take the, the higher ground here, be the nice person, even though people wanted me to. Um, they actually went and they deleted it straight mm -hmm. away. They went and deleted all of those comments because you called them out. By being silent, they actually have the control. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's really important to really fight. Well done. It, it, it does... Yeah. Thank you, Yelena. I'll bring in the two politicians here as well, because... Are we talking about a need for greater regulation here? Does it go as far as the previous questioner put, and that is actually ha forcing people to be identified? What can you do, Michelle Rowland? Well, firstly, uh, Yelena said she's a fighter, but I think it's important to note that she shouldn't be left to fight alone. Um, there is a role for civil society, for governments, um, for regulation um, in this area as well. And it's fortunate in Australia that we have uh, a leading agency in the eSafety Commissioner that actually does have powers under the Online Safety Act to listen to complaints, take complaints, to take down posts 
and even unmask people go behind that anonymity um, where it's required to carry out the act. By this stage, Issue. so much of the damage is done. Yeah, it's Absolutely. done. Absolutely. But also, I've done this, by the way. I'm not on Twitter. Mm. I'm on Instagram. I've done this. Mm. I've reported it. Um, I've even, even blocked some people. There is no action, by the way. I looked at it a week later. Those posts mm. were not taken down. Right? So nothing was actually done, right? I called them out, all of them got taken off. But why does, well, my question in general is not to you, but just in general, why can someone write something that damaging? Um, I'm not going to repeat those things again mm. or, you know, mm. but there is no filter, that stays there. And mm. let's think about this as well. What message are we sending to the younger generation that this is okay? Yeah. Can, stand, well, can I? No, sorry. Well, yes. certainly, right. certainly it's not yeah. okay. Um, we do have a cyberbullying scheme for children and an adult cyber abuse scheme that takes thousands of cases and complaints and that are dealt with by investigators at eSafety. Mm. Um, this is an aspect of the law. It's barely a year old and we're bedding down as a government a lot of those implementation points in the Act. But I think one of the most important things I take away, Elena, from what you're saying is that we need to... People need to report this. Um, we have an e-safety commissioner. Unfortunately, not enough people know that it is there, that it has these resources and that it has these powers. Mm. And there's also interaction between the e-safety commissioner and mm. the platforms. And platforms acting on their own are often not incentivised um, to act quickly. Yeah. And that's why we have these regulations yeah, Stan, in place. Stan, look, I think the really fundamental point here is that the social media companies um, don't care a great deal about online safety. That's the reality. And as a consequence, in Australia, we've had to take some, you know, very strong regulatory action. So the Minister mentioned the eSafety Commission that we set up in 2015. Um, uh, Cyberbullying uh, regulations will be taken down with, for kids. Cyber abuse for adults, which just came in in the Online Safety Act. Uh, a year or so ago. But the fundamental problem here is um, the social media companies show a thuggish disregard for the mental health of Australians. Mm. And so what that means is, as a government, you need to lean forward. And the social media companies... Are well, you, very... had a, you had a long time in government to lean well, and forward. We did. And we did, Stan. <laughs> and we did. The, I mean, the eSafety Commissioner, there is nothing else in the world like the eSafety Commissioner. And, of course, like, and to Elena's point, um, we have, have, is every single awful thing that happens online removed? No, of course not. No-one's suggesting that. We'd love to get to that point. But the eSafety Commissioner has clearly been very valuable. But I think the, um, the really important point here, Stan, is that um, the social media companies are very sophisticated, they're very smart, they're very good at sort of moving the ball down and coming up with uh, plausible-sounding reasons as to why not much should happen. And that's why regulatory action is important. We did, There's some other things that we should We did talk ask about some too. of those companies to appear tonight, but um, mm. they're mm. not here, perhaps mm. another time. Can I just put a quick question um, to Narelda and Imogen as well? Mm. It's something that occurs to me, I hear it from other people as well, why stay on it? Because it's a beautiful place. <laughs> it is actually a beautiful place. Instagram is a beautiful place. You still get some nasty messages um, on Instagram. And, you know, here I am on Valentine's Day with love in my heart, um, mostly for myself. Um, and, <laughs> there, and then there's someone who's tagged me in a comment. Um, Burn in hell. Hell is waiting, you know. And so... I felt really sad after reading that because, mm. you know, it's Valentine's Day. But, you know, it's for the most part, Instagram is a really beautiful place. It's an empowering place. Twitter. Um, it's where I started out with social media and in, in a big way, sharing all of myself, giving so much of myself, like you do as well, Yelena. You've created a safe space for people to come and, uh, and feel empowered and supported. Um, and you find a community there. Mm. Yeah, and I don't think when you go, well, why stay on it? Mm. Uh, you know, why should we succumb to people that mm. are doing yeah. something and that is so not OK? Yeah. Something that is and, not and right. Imogen, it is a community, isn't it, too? Yeah. yeah, and I think there are amazing things that social media is able to offer yeah. us. I think I find incredible resources um, <laughs> around queer history and um, queer education mm. that I wouldn't have access to otherwise. Yeah. I think I have amazing communities of political opinions and mutual aid that I'm able to access, and I think that's incredible. And asking women just to log off, which is 
one of the most popular comments I've seen when we're talking about this, on Twitter especially, is asking women to remove themselves from another aspect of public mm. life. Yeah, and especially... <laughs> I think that comment mainly goes to also people in the public eye or that mm. have a platform. It's like, well, you are in the media, you kind of have to expect expect that. But no, why? No, you don't. Why yeah. do you have to expect it if you yeah. are... You know, it doesn't just and go for us. Much more famous people it, than us and, and singers and athletes in the world. Why is that normal? Because you are in the public eye that it's normal to be abused. Yeah, I actually really... Yeah, I well, actually really try to use We're my... We're going to... Um, yeah, so, I actually, sorry. Sorry, I actually really try to use mine for something good. People come, mm. and especially women to maybe get a bit of motivation help. I've gotten it from other people yeah. as well. So why can't we create this beautiful co community and mm. safe space, which is what a lot of us are trying to do without actually being abused? Yeah.